This is the air potato, Dioscoria bulbifera, one of the most despised invasive plants in the southeast. This is the cousin of Dioscoria bulbifera, which is not an invasive. This is Dioscoria opposita. Unlike the air potato, see how tiny these things are compared to an air potato? Unlike the air potato, these guys are edible right off of the vine. Now there are varieties of Dioscoria bulbifera which are edible, but most of the ones you find in the wild will mess you up and they are not good foraging. These guys here are more of a garden crop than a wild crop. They're not nearly uh, as vigorous as the air potatoes, but they are a lot cold hardier, which means they can grow quite a bit of the way up the East Coast and not just down in Florida and Georgia like the air potato. The cool thing um, about these little guys is that you can just pick them off and use them just like you would regular potatoes, except they're tiny little potatoes. Call them uh, yamberries. That's what Eric Tonsmeyer calls them. If you've ever read his book, Paradise Lot, he calls these things yamberries, and it's Dioscoria opposita. It's like a little tiny air potato. And each one of these little guys here uh, can actually be planted, and some of them will grow and some of them won't, but this time of year, uh, they're go starting to get ready to go into dormancy. Even though it's just September, I'm seeing the leaves starting to turn yellow and plants are not as vigorous as they were. And they're starting to make nice, big, fat bulbils all over them. They started making these earlier in the year and now they're really uh, starting to fatten up. And they fall off really easily. They've been dropping all around this plant. I'll show you the base of the plant in just a second. These things are kind of cool. You can actually just take them and either plant them or microwave them until they're soft and eat them or just steam them and cook them like potatoes, however you want to do it. But they're like little potato berries. This is the other side of the plant. It's a big mess. If I had a better trellis rather than just a few sticks stuck into the pot, it would work better. I originally planted my first bulbils in the ground here to get them started a few years ago. As you can see, Look at the look at the amount of little potatoes on this thing. It's kind of crazy. It's a bunch of them. They get better and better and more productive year after year. Now, the reason these are normally grown is not for the hanging bulbils. They're actually normally grown for the roots. Uh, the base down there, the ants have built in here. There's actually fire ants all in there. So I'm not going to go digging up and showing you what the bottom of them looks like. But they'll make a great big edible yam at the base. So if you just wanted to grow these things and not fiddle around with the little hanging edible roots, you could just plant these guys and use them uh, to grow yourself some great big yam roots beneath the ground. Another name for this is the Chinese yam and it's, it's an Asian yam. It's cold hardy apparently to zone six, maybe zone seven. And uh, just kind of one of those cool perennial vegetables comes back every year and allows you to pretty much harvest little edible roots out of the air. So for a forest garden and the vine layer of a food forest, for a kind of a pretty trellis covering vine to grow off of your back porch, and just for a sort of a weird little survival crop that has both edible roots beneath the ground and roots hanging up in the air. Plant yourself one of these, Dioscoria opposita, the Chinese yam, and uh, you really have kind of a bizarre and cool perennial vegetable that most people don't know anything about. And it's not a terrifying invasive air potato. I took about three minutes picking and this is what I came up with. So, quite a bit of, uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good side dish right there for a couple of minutes picking. I like that the roots are above the ground because they come off clean. All you got to do is go in and microwave those things with some butter and salt or steam them or bake them or whatever you want to do, and they are ready to go. Pretty cool, huh?